so my new bumper is in. So now we're going to start putting this together. It's only one, two, three, four, like ten pieces. Am I right? One, two. So apparently you build this whole rear bumper on the, a flat surface, so we're going to do it on the concrete floor. And the first step is to make sure you get these at a 90 degrees, so we're using two of these cool triangles, and I'm going to hold it, and Mike's going to tack weld it so that if it's not perfect, it's my fault because I'm the one that lined it up. So I ordered these side steps to help get into the back of the truck when you're loading and unloading quads, stuffs. So any news, we need to weld these in to make the steps useful. So they go like this according to the instructions. Yeah. bottom of this one. Look. So now he's going to do some beautiful welds on this bumper. The F1, please. And I get it. Here we go. Make a deal for it.
I finished this wall here, and I'm not going to keep going, but I'm not sure where Josh went. I'm guessing he's sulking somewhere in the corner. Well, my welds are pretty sad, so Hoagie here is going to teach us how to weld. Well, we're going to try. We're going to try. <laughs> That's loud. Got a stick of dynamite. It's the best, to, best material to use for welding. You get good penetration. So a rule of thumb for rods is the diameter is roughly what the what you set the heat to. So those are 1 8 rods, so that in the decimal is 0.125. So that's just a rule of thumb. So anywhere from uh, 105 to 120, depending on what you're welding. I'll try it at 105. So if you if you have done some tacks and it's still got slag on it, you're going to want to chip them. Chip it off and wire brush it. Make sure you have a good quality mask when you're welding. It makes it a lot easier to see. This is what you call quality. Heat up? Yeah. 120? Yep. Get around. There's an adjustable. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> She's locked up with 200 amps. 225. <laughs> I've never seen a rod do that. <laughs> Go on fire? Yeah. If you go like this too much, uh, then you get it in behind it, underneath it. Yeah, and it's the rod will start burning down here more. You want it to burn more on the end. Like if you yep. tilt the rod like this, it'll still burn. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but it's all about the angle. So you want something like this, and you want to whip it back and forth and pause for a second at the end. Yep. At each, at each whip. And really watch that. The AC is a little different, but regardless, welding in general, you're going to watch that rod melt and you can actually see your bead forming. So you just want to make sure you're walking it both sides. Yep. And uh, then you want to get those slag inclusions. And usually when you're welding a big hole like that or something thin, you tend to like keep the rod away. So oh, I don't want to. The farther you have the rod away, the hotter the arc is, the longer the arc is, the hotter it is, and the more likely you're going to burn through. So you want to keep it close. You want to keep it close, you want to just keep it right in there. And then flip it away from that. Yeah. And well, like you've seen there, I just filled that hole. Yep. Stop and, like, start and stop yep. and let it cool. Just for that split second, hit it again. If you had a like left slag in there and you went weld over top of that, the weld would just go right around. And it would that come slag off. and you have a big pocket again. <clears throat> Stop.
start it here, come back, walk it back a bit, and then yep. walk back over here. Yeah. You know, say uh, cleanliness is godliness, and when you're welding, you want to make sure you got no slag. Like I welded the back side of this, one of hasn't been welded yet, but on the other side of the bumper, I welded the back side of this uh, joint here, and obviously you got all the penetration coming through and some slag. So you just got to make sure you clean it, wire brush it really well, because if you leave chunks of slag in there and you go to weld over top, it, you're going to get a slag inclusion. Unless, of course, sometimes you get lucky and you got it you hot enough and it'll burn right through it. But the cleaner you have the metal, the cleaner you uh, clean your, your welds up, <clears throat> get all the slag out, the better it's going to be, the better it's going to look. So. Yeah. Me and this old girl came to an understanding by the end of the night. She, she treated me pretty good. First time ever really welding a lot of AC and uh, once I got her figured out it went pretty good so. Yep, just because it doesn't look pretty doesn't mean it won't work. What about that one? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might need a few parts for that one. You got a wire? Apparently. Great. I got one tack. So, we got the bumper level, and then I got two tacks on it, which are holding it now. And then I got looking at it and noticed that it's not centered because Chris and Wanya were holding it, and they told me to quickly tack it, and I didn't look oh, at it. Oh, because Josh was the dumb guy. Because Josh was centering it. Or not centering it, leveling it. So now I have to cut those tacks off and re-weld it. And we ran out of wire to the arc welder. You sound so enthusiastic. What job is done? Take it out of the package, would ya? Then you gotta roll all back up. So we're just gonna um, weigh this on the scale. Wait a second, Chris, get yourself off the scale. Ninety-three pounds, ninety-four pounds. So we got these tack welded on. Had it on the truck for that. Took it back off. We're gonna weld them up solid. We're gonna use this awesome marker. There. So. We need another hole right there somewhere. Shove those wires in there. That's like the most awkward way to do that ever. So now I'm gonna grind these welds pretty much flat and then use a flapper wheel to make them all blend in nicely like that. That was a lot of grinding. And she goes. 
while we're trying to get the hitch receiver off to send it for paint at the same time. Like spaghetti. These lights, uh, I use my old bumper, and they're flaking a little bit around the edges because they're aluminum. So we're gonna take the face off, and with these, you just need an Allen key, spin them off. And we're gonna paint this nice shackle red. So I'm cleaning these up right now. Always use greasy skin to clean things. That's right. So this turd has got to go. Maybe we should just do a roll pan. Doesn't that look nice? So much awesome, all in one bumper. We tinted these lenses nice and black while we had the covers off, so they look dang. Light shining out. You do? Away from your plate. Oh, then it okay. blinds people who try to look at your plate. Everything's on the bumper now, so we just gotta put it on the truck, hook up the lights, and we're good to roll. So this is the finished product of our move rear bumper and it's looking pretty sweet.